guys. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Let's get some weed and feed done today. Uh, the corn has finally taken off. We've been so cold, so wet. That corn has just been sitting there struggling, uh, especially on these fields here. Any field, any field, my field, neighbors, any field, doesn't matter tillage, doesn't matter anything. Uh, any field that has any wet spot in it, that wet spot uh, is just terrible. And so, um, our field across the road has a huge wet spot in it, a huge, just big flat basin kind of little area. Ugh, so that, that thing is struggling. Um, but we got to clean up. I didn't make a parallel pass where I put hay on the headlands. I didn't make a parallel pass to the headland with the herbicide on first round. So there's some triangles that got hit and didn't get hit. Um, so I'll have to clean them up and then, uh, and our herbicide is just running out of horsepower. We're, we're out there super early, which is great, but it the corn's just going really slow. It just did not get the canopy until now. And we're just, you know, 4th of July, we're coming into knee high. And uh, it, the corn is really turning a corner here. Uh, up until several days ago, it was just like, oof, this is some tough looking corn around the area. And, uh, and so, yeah, but, it's taken off now, so let's get some weed and feed out there, do a little cleanup on the herbicide, and uh, add a little residual punch to it, and then uh, get our, our feed. So let's build our foliar program. Everything has a specific reason or purpose. Uh, we're not just throwing the kitchen sink here. So we have a pH product, um, pH Max by Max Systems. We test the water, we get a pH reading of the water, and then... Uh, we add accordingly to what they recommend. So for me, it's only four and a half ounces per hundred gallons. So, you know, three and a half gallons roughly for my sprayer mix, uh, easy to use. And so that's its main purpose is just the pH buffer. What are you doing? Um, but it also is a carrier of hydrogen and oxygen uh, in, in, in simple terms without getting, you know, too scientific. It helps with photosynthesis and the oxygen and hydrogen just help with uh, nutrient availability moving up and down in the plant. The fulvic acid component of the Energize is fulvic acids are a cleating agent. In the soil, uh, cleating just makes, means make available. So in the soil, your fulvic acids are what is breaking free the nutrients for soil life to become available to the plants. Uh, and so by putting that on foliar, we're just helping that plant, the, the nutrients get into the plant, uh, and again, helping nutrients move through the plant, and we're stimulating a response in the soil. Uh, same with the humic fertilizers. Uh, the humic, it's, it's a larger molecule. It's more of a soil acid than a, than a plant acid. But again, we're just trying to trigger that response and support the plant and the the life our seaweed extract that's in that product the seaweed extract is again helping photosynthesis and it carries amino acids to help the plant with nutrient availability and all that kind of stuff your carbons and sugars and molasses they're going to support the soil life that's fixing our nitrogen and nutrient and again we're back to creating uh, micronutrients are zinc and sulfur um, so that's that. So at the end of the day, all that stuff is just the leftover from Inferl. Um, the two products I'm really excited about for Inferl you're feeding this time of year is the Torch product. And the component I want out of here is our phosphite acid. Do some reading, do some reading and research. Don't, don't, don't take my results for it. Do your own research. It worked on our farm. It could work on yours. But, uh, I've really had great luck with phosphite acid over a few years that I've been using it. it, what, it it's, a, it's a health promoter. It's a defense promoter in the plant, and it's also a good root stimulant. Um, when, the plant, when, when the plant senses the phosphite acid on it, I don't know how that works, but it promotes the plant to kick its defense system into gear and also kick its root growth into gear. Um, there's a bunch of other nutrients and benefits to this torch product, but to me, it's the phosphite acid. Uh, ever since that, we've been using that. Our soybeans have been green to the ground. There's no yellow layer inside the canopy. Um, and so that's a huge signal to me of, of overall plant health. Um, 
there's research out there um, on tar spot and, and other things of how good phosphate acids can be. And uh, for me, it keeps me from having to buy the fungicides. I don't, I don't like fungicides. I don't like death if I can eliminate it or reduce it as much as possible around the farm. So if I can help hold off diseases and make my plants healthier through a fertilizer than a chemical that just kills, then, then I'm gonna choose that every day of the week. Um, do reading on phosphate acids. That's all I can say. Do your research on high quality ones. And then of course the source product, um, that again is just a stimulant uh, to the plant and to soil life to, to go get more nutrients. And, and this whole system together, um, we've soil tested it last year. We saw that with this whole system working, you notice I didn't say, here's my 50 pounds of, of phosphorus and here's my 100 pounds of potassium kind of stuff. Um, but this whole system here is really moved the needle last year on our soil tests of P and K and nitrogen. And so without adding a bunch of N, P and K, um, so this is allowing us to kind of wean off of a lot of the retail fertilizers. All right, potassium acetate, that's our last ingredient. Uh, we're going into a, a growth spurt, and uh, we want to make sure we have plenty of potassium there. Um, and potassium acetate is very highly available, going through the foliar, uh, fills that any potential gaps that our plant could be having in, in this rapid growth stage that we're entering. Um, it promotes, again, we're promoting for the photosynthesis, root growth, development. Um, it, it just complements everything that we're already doing. Uh, we got six bales off this little headland. I uh, got 20, I think 20 bales exactly off that three acre. And then uh, off the two acre, did we get 13 bales? So between this headland and the other headland and that, we had like almost 50 bales. So I'm driving in half so I can cut my sprayer in half. And you can see these little spots. So I never thought about that at the beginning, but oh well, there's the corn. This corn on corn, it's like driving on a sponge. This field is getting nice and soft. It's holding moisture and it shows because this little ridge normally, on a normal year under full tillage, um, this ridge used to get burnt up pretty fast, pretty fast. Not much water capacity up here, um, but on a year like this, it's the opposite. Your hilltops are doing good. You can see where the water leaves the hill through here. It's kind of suppressed. And then uh, down over here, it zags up towards that field. That's where the water comes in. And you can see how it's kind of ugly through that area. Yeah, overall, pretty happy with the crops. Look at this little hotbed. It, uh, you can see some wet here, but there's spots that I've got the boom at six feet or five feet high and there's spots that the boom will tickle some of that stuff. Um, this is wet sand or, or goofy sand. Um, in a wet year, this field's wet. In a dry year, this field's very dry. Uh, in the springtime, there's a swale right here and it comes through here right where we're kind of sitting and it heads over there and, and then down to the driveway and uh, you can easily make some ruts or or potentially get stuck but uh, hey on a year like this for whatever reason now that field over there I don't even have to spray because that's super clean but this one for whatever reason the grass this the grass is something fierce in here and so kind of weird kind of weird boy Pulled in the driveway, parked the sprayer so I can refill it as soon as I can get some Roundup to finish them fields over there. And uh, we got that going on. I grab my duel quick and I'll just 
pop that hub off and ah, put that front wheel on. Got the shoot. We're going to the cattle show tomorrow. Going to the cattle show. Junior cattle show. Fantastic event.